heaven came down. I was happy and free. stand up here. Happy October, everybody. Can y'all believe it's already October? Yeah, yeah we're so excited. Miss Heaven, let you hold that. And then Miss Addie, I'm gonna let you hold this, okay, girl? You hold that. So good morning, everybody. Um, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So the kids... Every Sunday, we're going to do just a little something for the pastor to take. Thank you, because this was very spur of the moment. So thank you for letting us come up here and take a minute of time. So we want to tell you thank you. And the, we have made you a big thank you card with heartfelt letters. And then we also have, you can't celebrate, us kids, us kids, can't celebrate anything without candy. So we have got you a big jar of hugs. So Miss Hadley, will you give the pastor his thank you card and also we talked about what pastor appreciation was and miss addy will you give him his candy the big jar of hugs thank you thank you so hey we talked about what pastor appreciation was your jobs we know you have a lot of jobs to do so we talked about it and they said you sing you pray you read the bible miss blakely said that you even go visit your grandbabies miss little addy and dakota and then Victoria said he actually eats cake. So you have a lot to do, Pastor. But anyway, thank you for your time. And y'all, we're going to go sit on the back pew and worship and sing for Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Don't we love and appreciate our children? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Amy. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I tell you, it's... Uh, there are times when you're surprised, then there's times you're just surprised. And that's a pleasant surprise, amen? I don't like the surprise when you go out to get in your automobile and you got a flat tire or your battery's dead. That's a bad surprise. But when you come to the house of the Lord on the first Sunday of October and they say, hey, we're kicking off Pastor's Appreciation Month uh, with the children, that is a pleasant surprise, amen? Oh, hallelujah. Give the Lord a great big praise offering today. Oh, hallelujah. Would you stand with us, please? Blessed be the name of the Lord, my Father and my God. We love you, Lord, and we're grateful to you for your love for each of us. For the anointed of the sweet Holy Spirit of the living God. God, we just pray and move that the Spirit of God would have his perfect will and way in this house today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just remain standing. Come on, put your hands together this morning if you can hear me out there. <laughs> I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. What I see.
Come on and worship the Lord with me this morning. My God, he is the real God. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Oh, there are some things that I may not know. There are some places Sweet. 
Give him a praise offering right now in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. My Lord, my Lord, turn to your neighbor and tell him or her, I'm glad you're with us in the house of the Lord today. Would you do that? I'm glad that you're with us in the house of the Lord today on this beautiful, liquid, sunshiny Sunday morning. Thank the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, that you made it today. I want to say from the deep of my heart, I appreciate everyone who makes a worship service possible, who makes any service possible, because we know that as we come together in the name of the Lord, we come to receive as well as to give. We give unto the Lord of our highest praise. We're to give unto the Lord of our highest worship. We're to give unto the Lord because what he has done for us. Do you remember when you got right with God and you gave God everything and you gave him your heart and soul? If you do, would you shout amen? Amen. Thank God for his goodness and for his mercy. I want to say to everybody, if this is your first time here or even by live stream, we want to say welcome to the Armerchi Church of God. Let's make our visitors welcome today. Good to see you today in the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Again, I want to say thanks to Amy and to the children's church workers and the children for sharing so much of their love with Donna and I on this first Sunday of October. When you stop and think about the love of God that is shed abroad in our heart and in our soul, it all began many, many years ago. Psalms 24 and verse 1 declares, The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and all they that dwell therein. And regardless how upside down that you might feel that this world is today, regardless how out of sync that you might feel even your life is today, I want you to know that it's okay from time to time to say, why? You know, I came up in a generation that, you know, we were taught you were never to ask God the question, why? But as I've continued my walk with God now over these years, and many are they now, there's been many times that I've asked the Lord the question, why? And when you stop and begin to meditate upon this question, the Lord in Matthew 27 and 46 declares, Matthew 27 and 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathani. That is, my God, my God. And help me out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Why hast thou forsaken me? Father, I realize that there are many here today that are faced with challenges. I realize that there are many that have tuned in by live stream and that will continue throughout this week to tune in this service. And possibly by this time next week, should you tarry in your coming, our world will have gotten even worse. And people's hearts, dear Lord, will cry out, as you did, Jesus, on the cross, Why? Why? Touch us now through the power of the Holy Spirit of God in Jesus' name. 
And the people of God said, Amen. Once again, would you turn to your neighbor, lean forward, and tap that person in front of you and say, Thanks for being here today. Amen. Just reach forward and thanks for being here. Many times in life's journey, this question, does it not come up? Why? Why? The other day, I went and fulfilled my morning constitution and had my morning coffee. And a gentleman came in after going through the drive through I noticed when he went up, I noticed when he ordered, I noticed when he went around, and I noticed when he got out of his automobile and came in. And I looked at the other preacher that was with me. I said, watch this. He's going to ask a question. And he continued to walk up toward the counter, opened his bag that he got at the window, and said, why didn't you get my order right? Hasn't there been times that even as a husband or as a wife, we look at our spouse and say, why? Hasn't there been times on the job when the employer would tell us to do something, the first response from the employee is, why? Even our children, when Jonathan and Jeremy, as they were growing up, I would tell them to do something, and instead of just fulfilling it, one of them would quickly ask, the, why? Am I right or wrong? Now, my little four-year-old granddaughter, when, when they come to the house, I, I'll say, Papa, won't you to, why? It's just part of our nature, is it not, to ask the question, why? Why is it, beloved, I ask you now, that we feel like that when we give our heart to God, that God's not big enough for our whys in life? Notice, if you will, our text where Jesus is up on Golgotha's hill. And notice Golgotha's hill is known as the place of the skull. And the reason it's referred to as the place of the skull, if you look closely at the pictures of Golgotha hill, if you look at Calvary's mount, it literally takes on the form of a skull. And I ask you the question, does not the question why start right here in our mind of reasoning and we try to reason within our own heart and reason within our own minds, why do I have to do this? Why is this happening to me? Why, why, why? Jesus himself at the very moment that he took all the sins known to man, all the sicknesses that known to man upon himself, there was just that moment in time he cried out for he felt forsaken he felt alone the human part of the God man was coming out and he said Eli Eli lama sabbathani my God my God why hast thou forsaken me oh my Lord help us to understand today father that the answer to our whys may be obvious to us and then and there again, they may not be obvious for our entire lifetime. But even if we know why, it is likely that we do not know the why nots. Uh, you see, beloved, we ask God the question repeatedly from time to time. Why is this happening? Why is this sickness lingering? Why am I having such physical uh, difficulty? Why am I going through the valley? Why? Why aren't you answering me? Why? And the list goes on and on and on. It's not that we should give up asking questions. Rather, I submit to you that we just need to understand the role in the brokenness of our life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Questions can be quite helpful during times of mourning a loss. There have been times in my life I've heard of a, a event happening where I've lost a loved one, and immediately we say, why? 
when Danny just a few months ago after being here on a Sunday morning and he and I stood in the foyer and we just visited and we were just affirming each other only to get a phone call late that night and said that he had passed away and, and I thought to myself and I, I literally, Phoebe, when I hung up, I said, why, Lord? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You see, the question helps in our mourning of a lost loved one. It helps in our communication when we're frustrated as well as expressing our very feelings. What we need to understand is that our questions are important to God and that the scriptures are full, now get this, of hurting people, frustrated people, angry people, people in doubt, people going through a valley, people that are afflicted, asking the question, why? On the count of three, I just want you to shout it out. Why? One, two, three. Why? Psalms 2. Psalmist David says, Why do the heathen rage and the people plot out vain things? Psalms 10. Psalmist David continues, Why do you stand so far off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of my trouble? You ever felt like that? In Psalm 13, he cries out with a hurting, bleeding heart, How long, O Lord? He continues this dialogue with God. How long, O Lord? First question. Second question. Will you forget me forever? Third question. How long will you hide your face from me? Then he goes into verse 2 of Psalm 13. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? When am I going to get through this? When am I, when am I going to make it? When am, I, when am I going to arrive? I have a word for you today in the name of the Lord. You're right on the brink of receiving what the answer is. Just don't give up in the name of the Lord. Many years ago, there was a song written in the early 80s. Don't give up on the brink of your miracle. Hold on, child of God. Amen. The the answer is on the way in the name of Jesus. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is on the way. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to get through it in the name of Jesus. Oh, would you give him a praise offering in this house today? Then he says again in Psalms 13 and verse 2, How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Did you see all those questions? How long? Why? Why are you so far from me? How long do I have to go through this sickness? How long do I have to mourn? How long do I have to be so, so much at the end of my road? Why do I have to be constantly scraping? Why is it seemingly I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. Verse 3. David gets down now to the brass tacks. In verse 3, I want you to note the third verse. He said, consider and hear me, O Lord. <laughs> but his faith is steadfast because he says, my God. <laughs> Woo! My God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me 
is life pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Oh, hallelujah. You see faith in the midst of the why, faith in the midst of the sickness, faith in the midst of the lack, faith in the midst of the grief, faith in the midst of the loss is saying faith of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. My God is still on the throne today and he is real. He is real. He is real. Oh, give him a praise offering in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he says in verse 5, I have trusted you and I've trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your, now this is faith. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Maybe that's been the problem. We've tried too much in ourselves. Now we've got to be dependent upon God. Amen. Does he not say in Proverbs, where is it, 3, 5, and 6, lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall. My Lord, he said, you are my salvation. Then in verse 6, he said, I will sing to the Lord. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pastor. Is this the same chapter? Is this? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to know you get up? And you seem like you just can't put one foot in front of the other. But you get up anyway. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You just hardly can't make it down the steps or back up the steps of life. But you do it anyway. And before long, beloved, you look back over your life. And you're like the children of Israel who declared, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would be a people most miserable. But we look back today and say, thank God I made it. Thank God the Lord never forsook me. Thank God God entertained my, answer, my question and he answered me. My Lord and my God. Notice if you will. He said, I will sing to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. It was a couple of weeks ago. Help me please with that song, He's Breath in My Lungs. Great are you, Lord. We had one of our ministers. The doctors had given up on him. The doctors had called in the family from what I understand. And they had told him that the COVID had attacked his lungs. And that there was nothing else they could do for him. But he said he remembered the Sunday before going into the hospital. He began to remember the song that the praise team was singing that he there great are you lord and there's your breath is in my lungs I just keep pouring out my praise. Your breath is in my lungs. I just keep pouring out my praise. And he said it wasn't long before after the family left. He said the doctor came in. He said I, I didn't have the energy. He said because of all that I was strapped to. He said but I kept singing in my heart. A heart that no doubt said why am I laying here? A heart that no doubt said God why have I caught this saying? A heart that no out said, Lord, is this the end? But uh, something deep within got a hold of his spirit. And as the words of the apostle Paul to the young Timothy, stir up the gift of God and lies dormant within you. He began to pour out his praise unto God. And he said, the doctor came back in and said, I don't know what's happened, but you're doing better. Your count's up. Your oxygen levels are where they are to be. Your blood pressure's where it are to be. Let me tell you, that man was released. I'm here to tell you, beloved, God is still on the throne. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, if you will, he said, Lord, you have dealt bountifully with me. Go to Psalm 16. Look at verses 11 or 5 through 11. Psalm 16, 5 through 11. He says, O Lord, 
You are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. My cup. That's right. Did you know you've got a cup? Hey, man, my cup's full of questions right now. That's all right. My cup's full of affliction right now. That's all right. My cup's full of vinegar and water right now. That's all right. Hold on to the cup because we're going somewhere with it. Notice what he says. You maintain my lot in verse 6. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. How many of us realize we're living in a junkyard? <laughs> That's right. You say, what did you just say? We're living in a junkyard. Hey, man, I don't care if you live in the finest subdivision in Floyd County. I don't care if you have the number one lot over on the lake. It doesn't matter if you drove up in a rust bucket or one that's being just pristine kept. Beloved, it's nothing but junk. The Apostle Paul writing of what is to come of our inheritance, he said it's nothing more than a dung pile. But oh, hallelujah, we're going to a place, beloved, and eye has not seen and ear has not heard and neither has it been in store for all that, all that God has for us to Today. My Lord, I've got an inheritance with God. But the devil don't want you to see that. The devil don't want you to see that. He wants you to see right here and right now. He wants you to listen to all the bad and the gloom and the doom of the news. He wants you to meditate upon the long hours and the short paychecks. He wants you to meditate upon how, how you feel in your body and how you're stressed in your mind. He wants you to meditate, but oh, God brought you here this morning. God's got you tuned in today to declare, oh, hallelujah, I'm going to a place that, oh, hallelujah, I've never been before. You're going to a place that you've never been before. And, oh, beloved, he says there's gates of pearl, walls of jasper, streets of gold. There's no more COVID. There's no more cancer. There's no more heart problems. There's no more marital strife. There's no more sickness. There's no more weeping for the former things have passed away and behold all things are new. Ah, Lord, give him a praise offering from the deep of your heart. Hallelujah. Then he says in verse 7, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. See, that's a big problem nowadays. Nobody wants you to tell them anything. Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one wants to hear you tell, give any instruction. That's how people's doing the Word of God today. You know, I've been preaching this gospel for many, 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 many years. But I have never seen the act of stubbornness as I'm seeing now. People make as serving the Lord is an elective and serving God in a holy, righteous way is an elective. The scripture says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves in the manner of which some are. The scripture says, bring ye all your tithes into the storehouse of the Lord. The scripture says, be ye holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. But wait a minute, Pastor Moach. This is the first Sunday of October and the year is 2021. It's not convenient for me. I submit to you that people's lives would be much better off in their finances, in the well-being of their household, even in the domestic side of their household of making the ends meet. You'll even make it during the times ahead. 
if you have paid and walked in covenant with God of your tithe and of your offerings. But there's more tippers than there are tithers. Amen. There's more people that have come to ask the question, why do I have to do it like that? You know, I, I, you know, I really don't feel like going today, but we'll drag a three-quarters dead corpse out after you've had two days of rest on sun, Saturday and Sunday, and we'll drag that thing to the bathroom. We'll make it stand and look in the mirror, though as hideous as it is. We'll drop a little dabs of water on it. We'll stagger back into the closet, and then we'll grunt at the spouse. Amen. And then we'll grab a pot of coffee. Amen. Not just a cup. And then we stagger out to the car, and by the time we go in, we're walking right in and ready for another 12-hour shift. But when it comes to the service of the Lord, there's less than 20% in Christendom. I'm talking about in Christendom, less than 20% of Christendom, beloved, amen, that even believes the report of the Lord and living a biblical life. There is more cohabitation now than it's ever been before. Let me tell you, young and old, it's not just the young people doing it, honey. The Lord said that God can only bless that union when it is brought together in hope matrimony. You can't justify it because of what you get on the month. Amen. I've had seniors to say we're just living together because of, come on honey, we didn't get off the shrimp boat last night. We understand that lust in this day and time is running rapid and people's minds are being distorted and then we want to go to God and say, why? He said, Lord, you've given me counsel. Now, if you don't want God to answer you, don't ask. You don't have to run to hither and yon to hear from God. You don't have to turn on your favorite tele pastor or evangelist to hear from God. We all have them. But when you open the book and you begin to turn the pages, I've read where he says, holy men of old that were moved upon by the spirit of the living God pinned this word under the anointing of the spirit of God. I read in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God. I read it's the same yesterday, today and forever world without end. I read let every man be a liar but God be the truth this is a counsel that we are to have today. And beloved, if we get back between the lids of God's holy word, we'll understand and we'll receive the counsel that is needed in this hour. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Then he says here, he says, my heart also instructs me. Now notice, what are the next four words? My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Look over to your neighbor. Just say it to yourself. This too shall pass. My Lord. My Lord, right now I've got to have counsel from God. Right now I'm full of questions. Right now I'm saying, God, why? Right now I'm saying, God, how long? Then he says in verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not, help me out, one, two, three, and I shall not be moved. You remember that old song many years ago, just like a tree planted by the water? 
I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Why? Because my anchor is in Jehovah. I shall not be moved. My anchor is in Jehovah. I shall not be moved. It's not upon the feelings of man. It's not with faith in man. And I'm looking to the unseen hand that's guiding us by faith through this dreary land. My Lord and my God. But I love, I love what he says here when he says because, in verse 8, he says, he has set the Lord always before because he is at. Now, you got to get this. You've missed the whole message. You may have got the butter, but you didn't get the molasses on your, on your biscuit. <laughs> Listen. He is at my what? Right hand, and I what? Shall not be moved. Woo! Hallelujah. Hang with me. Go to verse 11. You will show me the path of life in your what? Right hand or what? Pleasures for how long? Evermore. Does that mean in the midst of COVID? Yes. Does that mean in the midst of sickness? Yes. Does that mean when seemingly all hell is coming against me? Yes. Does that mean when I'm sitting in church with pain? Yes. It means that there's pleasures forevermore in a God who is eternal. Because, beloved, this is why we have that appointment with death. Our body's going back to the dust from which it came. But he said it. He breathed into man, and man became a what? A living what? A living soul. The word of God declares in the book of, I believe it's the book of, of, of the psalmist. He said, the worm dieth not. Hear me today, dear Lord. Hear me today in the name of Jesus. Hear me today under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You're going to live forevermore. <laughs> Woo! You say, my Lord, I hope it ain't this side. Remember, we're in a junkyard. Notice, notice. <laughs> it's covenant. Please listen. It's covenant. The right hand is very, very significant. It's covenant. As when one takes a wife... She marches down the aisle on her father's right side. For the dad up until the date of her wedding has cared for her as his daughter in every way proper. But at the marriage, when the bride turns, to walk out with her husband who has coveted with her that he would love her, honor her. Hear me. Keep her in sickness and in health. <laughs> Care for her. The old country song said to the wife, Stand by your man. <laughs> Amen. Because you have coveted, if you will, richer for poorer in sickness and in health and forsaking all others as long as you both shall live. But when she as the bride departs with her husband, they both turn inwardly. Because up until then, couple would you come? Up until then, quickly. Up until then, the pastor has stood here 
the groom stood here smiling. Yeah. The bride was here. What side is she on? She's on his what? She's on his left side. Right? This is left for you. You got to get this because in the scripture it's covenant. See, we don't want to hear nothing about this. He said there's pleasures forevermore. Beloved, how many of you is going to the marriage supper of the Lamb? How many of the bride of Christ do we have here this morning? Amen. You're walking in covenant. You're walking in case said there are pleasures forevermore. Do you get it? Right here. But when he says, I take her for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep myself only unto you, as long as we both shall live. She says the same. They turn. I always have them face one another. Just face. And they're sitting there. Aren't they a beautiful couple? Got two babies and one on the way. Baby boy. Get this. Walking in covenant. Walking in covenant. They're pronounced husband and wife. The kiss comes in there somewhere. Sealed with a kiss. You want to do you want look at you? You want to do that part, don't you? <laughs> Watch this. This is what I want you to see. Listen, live stream. You're walking in covenant. She turned. Now, where is she? She's on his right side. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Amen. It don't matter how you're feeling. It don't matter all the whys. Amen. Now step around here. How long have y'all been married now? Ten years. Friday. Have you ever asked him why? Still ten years. Donna and I, we got forty. I've asked her why. You ever ask her why? Yeah. Amen. Why you're still laughing. Dum, dum, da, dum. And here comes the bride. Let's give them a hand. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. They're walking in covenant. You're walking in covenant. Amen. We made a covenant with the Lord when we gave him our heart. And he said there, he says, fear thou not. Oh, hallelujah, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is there in Isaiah 41. Hear me, beloved. God's holy holding us up when we feel as though we're shaking. God's holding us up when we feel as though we're going to give out. God's holding us up when we say, why, Lord? Why, Lord? Why, Lord? He may just be quiet, but, honey, he's got you covered in the name of the Lord. Then he says in Isaiah 41 and verse 13, For I, the Lord your God, will hold you by the right hand, saying unto you, Fear not, I will help you. I have never seen a day in all of my life that we're presently living I thought back to the stories of my dad who lived to be 88, who lived through the Great Depression very softly, who went into the last two years of World War II, who fought four years in the Korean War, who was married and was in ministry for 64 plus years. If he was here today, he would say to me, son, 
I've never seen it like it is right now. How many of you seniors would agree with that? You've never seen it like it is right now. It seems as though it just keeps piling on. I'm talking about life. It just keeps piling on. You know, I remember the day when, when a dad used to have time to take his kid fishing. I remember the day when mother used to have time to take the baby girl shopping. I remember the day that we used to get out and have fun even washing a car and soaking each other. I remember the day we had family sitting around the family table. I remember the day when we had home-cooked meals mother's cat head biscuits with the gravy and if she didn't have time for the cat head how many of you know what a drop biscuit is just I loved them as much just so long it was bread that's why I can't have it now but I remember the devotions as a kid Dad would say, come on, let's have our devotions. And I'd grab him, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> He'd look at me and say, read, I don't want to. That was the wrong answer. he just read. We would gather around a white, cream-colored like ottoman, and we would begin to pray. And it wasn't long before I would hear him later in his room crying out to God. It wasn't long before I would hear mother crying out to God. Even as a senior son with senior parents prior to taking both of them from their home, I remember them crying out to God. Oh God. I said all of that to say this when you walk in covenant with God beloved he says fear not for I will help you I will strengthen you I will sustain you but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory even by Christ Jesus our Lord and the greatest need that people have today is the need of salvation people need to turn back to God and get a hold of the horns of the altar one more time and call upon God people need to quit playing with their soul and understand that the trump of God's finger of the sound. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming. I don't know how long. I don't know what we'll have to go through. But I know this. That great is he that is within me. And he that is in this world. He's big enough to handle your question. Because he's already given the answer. Listen. I've had people to say, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why is the other happening? And I just asked them one little question. Are you really praying? Are you really praying? Honey, we all have needs. Amen. We all have one need or another. We all have one affliction or another. We all have challenges. But I hear the voice of the Lord whispering the word of God through the power of the Spirit saying, but my grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee. Take it to God. Say, God, I believe in you in the name of the Lord. If you have a need, 
if you have a need, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's everybody in this sanctuary. If it's everybody by life, if you have a specific need in your life, would you just stand right now? Would you just stand? Whatever the need might be, would you stand? My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Stop the music. I want to make sure you hear me. If you have a need this morning of anything in your life, whether here in the house or by live stream, I want you to stand in this house. Oh, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now begin to play. Ah, Lord. <laughs> my Lord. In the name of Jesus. My Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask him to touch you. Ask him to minister to you. Ask him to help you right now. Ask him to help you right now. In the the name of the Lord, my Lord, hear our prayer, hear our cry, hear our call, hallelujah, oh yes, sing it now, oh, and the elders are going to the door to receive your tithes and offerings. Listen, listen, listen. In Psalm 23, 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, give him a praise offering. Hallelujah. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to say thank you for everyone who has been bringing in certain items for the house of Cherith there in, a, in, a, in Atlanta. We have coveted with them, and North Georgia Church of God has coveted with them. Atlanta is the number two city in the United States for human trafficking, and you're making a difference right here from the Armerchi Church of God. We have different needs, and, and the needs are out on the table. All you've got to do is read them. And through all, up till Thanksgiving, you can bring in, several have been bringing in boxes of things for them. The needs are there. But in your offerings, God will bless. As we give of the Lord of our tithe and offerings, how many of you know you're walking in covenant with the Master? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I need your help. I want you to go to as many people as you leave today and just tell them, keep your umbrella up. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming. The umbrella will keep you from getting wet. Keep looking up for Jesus is coming and keep you affirmed in the name of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord one more praise offering today in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you.